Alright, hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna, aka Hooked by Brianna. And as you can tell by the title of this video, I don't know what exact kind of cardigan I'm making, but I am making a long cardigan. And I am trying to do something different because I haven't made like a really creative thing in a while now. I've just been doing a lot of basics. So I want to have some fun, experiment, and try some new things and put them all into one cardigan for the summer even though probably it's going to be too hot for the summer but it's going to be like summer colors as you can tell so i just got back from hobby lobby um i got all of these colors it costed 41 dollars i believe and um you can usually get it cheaper at hobby lobby at least because every other week they have yarn for 30 percent off but that was that was last week and i was too impatient to wait a whole nother week to start on this project so i just took the l and i got it anyway because it'll be worth a lot more than 40 dollars anyway once i am done with it and i'm going to go ahead and address the elephant in the room yes my arm is <laughs> hurting, but it doesn't hurt whenever it's like this position, I just can't put it down. So that doesn't affect the crochet process. So I'm still gonna crochet anyway. I'm gonna ice it too, but I'm gonna keep crocheting too. But let's go ahead and get right to this video and see where this thing goes. Welcome to day one. So here's the inspiration that I'm using. So I made this top, let me see, in 2020. So this is like from, a long time ago when I first started my business and everything. So I really like this flower. I only made it once and don't mind my knee singing in the background. But I only made this once and I want to put this as like the middle of the back panel maybe. We're going to see how that goes. So I actually got the pattern. Oh, how you see me? But I actually got the pattern off of Ravelry from Crochet Crystal Designs and it's called the Daisy Flower Charity Square. It's $3 so it's very inexpensive and it comes with video um, tutorials and with the written pattern. So I personally like the video one so that's what I'm going to be following and then I'll meet y'all once I finish making it. So I just finished making this square. I did a little granny oh. squitch. <laughs> I always do this. A granny stitch. I did it around the motive that I just finished, and now I'm going to continue. Just then I'm just going to. So I grabbed some letter beads and I spelled out Brie, and I just pulled some string through it and tied it like in the middle of the flower. This probably isn't the best method. But since I know this isn't going to be like pulled a lot or tampered with, they should be fine whenever it comes to staying on there as long as I continue to hand wash the cardigan. So like my red granny square cardigan, I like to do one big granny square in the back middle of the panel. So here's me just adding the different colors and just making that wide enough to stretch to my shoulders. So here is my finished back panel. I did add a little more beads just because it seemed a little empty with just the BRI. So I added these three just for the pink section. So this is the completed panel I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the little squares I believe and I'm just gonna finish the whole back panel first and then we'll start on like the sleeves maybe and then we'll do the front panel squares after that and just as a visual this is like how this is how far out it'll go so it'll go to the edge of my shoulders and it goes all the way if I hold it up here it goes about to where my pant buckle starts. So now I just have to make squares long enough to go down my legs. And with cotton, I believe this will stretch more. So I probably don't have to make as many squares as I usually do for acrylic. Well, maybe not stretch down more, but it's like it weighs down more as you can see. So I think I don't have to make as many squares. So I ended up making three by three, so a total of nine squares for my back panel. 
All right, so I finished the back panel and I use a different stitch to connect the squares. I usually like just single crochet them together, but I did a little mesh in between to make it longer because honestly I was being a little lazy and I didn't want to make a whole nother row of squares to make the sweater as long as I wanted it to be. But I do like the detailing that the little mesh has and it does make it really long. So if you do want to make a long cardigan, I do suggest this because it will speed up that process. So now I'm making more squares so I can start on the front panels. I was going to do how I did my first granny, long green square cardigan that's on my channel, which is where I have another side row and then I have the front panel, but because of this mess, if I do that, that will be way too big for me. So I'm just going to skip the side panel and I'm just going to do a front panel on top of the back panel. So I'll probably need to make like two squares to go here, here, and then of course the three down there. So five on each side for the front panel. Wait, sorry, I'm being slow. Actually, three. Yeah, I'll need three because I'm not doing the side panel. I would only do two if I was doing the side panel, but since I'm not, I'm going to be doing six. So we'll be doing six squares on this side, six squares on that side for our front panels. And then we're going to connect it with mesh on the sides as well because the mesh is enough to like cover the side for me because it's really stretchy too. But yeah. All right, so I will be linking down below the tutorial I use on how to learn how to connect these squares. But basically, you just go into one, and then I like to have a slip knot on the yarn that I'm using, and then I chain up two, and then you grab the second square, and I like to just get all the ends in one spot. And then I'm going to place a double crochet in the other corner the other square and then I'm going to chain one and then we skip a space you can't really see it honestly so I just go into like this one and then you do a double crochet and then after that you look at the second square skip two I mean skip one so I guess right here and then do a double crochet and then chain one go back to the front square and skip one, do a double crochet in the next loop. And you just keep alternating between that for the whole row until you get to the end. And that's basically how you make the mesh design in between the squares. And this is what the little mesh thing is looking like. Now I'm going to put it up to the sweater and see if my little guesstimations were right on how many squares I needed to make just before I make all the squares just what I know, honestly. If you're a crochet artist, I'm sure you can relate, but I consume so much video content while I am working. So throughout this video, I'm also going to put on the screen what I am watching while I'm making the different parts of my sweater. So as you can see, I did, here's the back, oops. Here's the back panel. And it's like here. It's pretty long. I probably can't do that many stripes or it's gonna be dragging on the floor. But yeah, I definitely don't need to get another room. But as you can see here, the front panel is a little longer than the back. So I'm gonna do like the little shoulder thing on the back panel where I make it have the neck hole and I have more rows for the shoulders to try to even that out. And with the front part here, I definitely can't really do stripes. So we'll see how this goes. So honestly, I have basically almost the same length on the front. So I'm gonna take off this bottom square and only make this one, two, three, four, five squares long and then it's not weird because the back is usually always longer than the front, but I think I can still even it out whenever I crochet the front panel on anyways. So, and I can always just do an extra row, like a granny square row at the top too, instead of doing it on the back. So that's the plan now. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one, and then we're gonna finish the other side of the front panel. 
and attach it with the mesh detailing on the side too. Cause right now I know it's looking very thin, but I think we can still do it whenever we add the mesh and it'll be more in the middle of my body. And I still have to do the stripes too. So it'll work itself out. So here's what I did for the sweater. So down here, I did do the mesh part, but once you get to this point, I stopped the mesh and I just did it normally. So it has a tighter fit up top, looser at the bottom. So that is the plan for right here. All right, so we reached our stopping point. We have almost everything done. We're just going to do a little bit more in the morning and do the borders, of course. But yeah, good night. So I actually couldn't sleep, so I am working on the borders a little bit. I'm gonna do the pockets in the morning probably, and honestly, I mean, I'm gonna go to sleep before I finish all of the border, but I already did one blue row, now I'm going in with orange, and this is probably gonna be the last border I do before I go to sleep. And after that, I also have like three or four more border rows to do. And then I'll just have the sleeves and the pockets left after that. Introducing the sequel of day one, day two. So now it is the next morning. I am still working on the border like I said last night. And here I am just finessing my way into watching the latest Love Island episode. And here is just a sneak peek of what the cardigan is looking like. Right now it is a vest, but as you can tell, we made a lot of progress last night. What's Trinity? What's up? What's up? What's up? So I want to do the hook sleeve again like I did on my Black History Month cardigan. So I went back on Stitch Fiddle. Luckily it was saved. I didn't know what I was gonna do if it wasn't. I would just give up on the sleeve, honestly. But we're gonna do hooked again. I was gonna do it solid blue, but I don't think I have enough yarn for that. So I might do like the different colors and do like stripes with the hooked still white in the middle. So that is the plan for one sleeve and the other one. I actually found a tutorial by Bruna. Um, let me go to it really quickly. I think it's in my watch later. Create a and it's basically website worthy of your brand. Offer your clients. It's this creepy stuff. Don't mind <laughs> all of my other watch laters. But yeah, this is what I want to do on the other sleeves because on my Black History Month, I did the sunflowers and I have the groovy flower on the back of my cardigan already. So I was like, maybe I'll add those, but we'll see. So I think it's easier just to go over here and um, oops, bless you, and see how I did it on the other sweater. I think that'll be a lot easier than trying to follow the graph, but yeah. Here's just a close-up of my fabulous arm with the foot wrap on it, <laughs> but I am working on the hooked sleeve, as you can tell. It is very time-consuming, but worth it. So good news and bad news. Good news, I finished the sleeve. Bad news, I have to go back to Hobby Lobby because that is all of the main color I have left. And yeah, but here's what the sleeve is looking like. Since I only have that much left, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it to the rest of the cardigan already just so I can see what it looks like. I think the sleeve liked me a little bit too long, but I like baggier sleeves more than shorter, tight ones, but it will make the hook a little harder to read. And I do have to still like sew some of these together just so you can clearly see the letters better like I did for my Black History Month sleeve. All right, I am going to the store now. Here's the little fit. Nothing too crazy, but let's go and hurry up and finish this last sleeve. All right, I am in the car and I am going to Hobby Lobby right now. Let's make this quick. Everything is far away from me though, so probably at least 30 minutes wasted. 
well definitely 30 minutes it takes 15 minutes there and back but let me go before i waste more time I probably should have looked at the name of it because I'm not sure. I think I got this one because it was more green, but yeah. You know you come into Hobby Lobby a lot whenever the worker is like, you must be working on a big project. Cause I remember you. I was like, yeah, I remember you too. And I really do. We got the good, the one thing, 15 minute drive just to get this thing right here. And I also noticed that the price is different because the ones that I got the other day, wait, I might be I might be telling y'all a lot. I don't know though. But I think the other ones were $4.99, but this one was only $3.99. Well, $3.79 actually. We'll see though. That's just from our memory. We did it guys. We chose the right color. So let's go ahead and finish this last sleeve. <clears throat> the, the, the price of the yarn was indifferent by the way. I just made that up in my head, I guess. So I already attached the sleeve to the cardigan at this point. Right now I'm just slip stitching it closed and as you can see, I changed the color to whatever color it is on the stripe just so you don't see it on the other side once I turn it right side out. All right, so now I made two identical squares here and here because I like the design already, but I did want to add pockets. So now I left a long tail for sewing and I'm going to do all of my needlework. So that'll be sewing on these pockets and making the hook look a little cleaner. So here is the amount of yarn that I had left over. I am so happy I made it through without having to go to Hobby Lobby once again. So I think we did pretty good. So here is what y'all have all been waiting for. The reveal of the brand new cardigan. So I hope y'all enjoy this video. Here is a flat lay. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And comment down below what I should do with this extra yarn from this cardigan. So we just no. got done filming a podcast. No, it's not podcast. out yet, but I'm gonna link down. I'm gonna link their channel down below. It'll be out soon. Yes, sir. Yeah. Give a few weeks. <laughs>